Hi guys, it is a spectacularly gorgeous Sunday morning here in paradise in the collapse of global industrial civilization. It is Sunday, July 12, 2020. <clears throat> my name is Sam Mitchell. This is my little co-pilot Sancho Panza and you have reached Collapse Chronicles sometimes with a Corona Panic Chronicles overtone. So J July 12th, for all of you, you probably know what this means. It means that I missed World Population Day yesterday. July 11th was World Population Day. It completely went under my radar, but I cannot remember my kind listener who sent this to me. It did not go uh, under the radar from this website called Our Burning Planet. Our Burning Planet, where we're going to hear from a fellow named Mark Tomlinson for this short essay, fairly short essay. Professor Mark Tomlinson is co-director of the Institute for Life Course Health Research. Life Course Health Research in the Department of Global Health Faculty of Medicine and Health Sciences at Stellenbosch University. So Mark is doing a fair job uh, trying to use the Corona Panic as a segue into the, uh, the Corona Panic distraction into a segue about World Population Day. So take it away, Mark. <clears throat> Corona Panic, a terrifying glimpse of a future where overpopulation and climate crisis overwhelm Earth. That's exactly what it is. Okay. In 1989, the United Nations, hilariously enough, established World Population Day which should be called World Overpopulation Day, which is observed on July 11th every year. The choice of July 11th was prompted by a milestone. That was when the world population supposedly crossed 5 billion people on July 11th, 1987. So we've basically added 3 billion more for all intents and purposes. In the past 33 years, that's what a billion new people on this planet every 11 years. There you go. Each year, World Population Day has a theme that highlights an issue relevant to global population. For example, in 2011, when the world population crossed the 7 billion mark, the theme was on how to engage with and activate all 7 billion people around the challenges related to our planet. And you see what good that has done. Uh, the reaction to that is to breed another billion people on the planet uh, in the last nine years. And that is how the planet responded to the theme and how to engage around the challenges related to our planet. They had a big orgy, I guess. Okay. Now, in 2020, the focus of World Population Day yesterday is on reproductive health and gender equality, and the UN has called for countries to attend to the unfinished business of the 1994 International Conference on Population and Development. The unfinished business in this case is the recognition that achieving gender equality is essential if we are to achieve sustainable development. Now I need to break in to Mark's sermon with a little bit of my own. First of all guys, the, uh, you know, as anybody at Collapse Chronicles knows, there is no such thing as sustainable development. 
sustainable development is the oxymoron of the 21st century. And then, of course, there is the much more important uh, achieving gender equality. There is one way to achieve gender equality on this planet in 2020, and that is for every man and boy to get a vasectomy, and it is for every woman and girl on this planet to have their tubes tied. We need gender equality. We need to have vasectomies equal tubal ligations. That is the one way human, humanity is going to achieve sustainable development. It is the one way, it is the only way. Okay? And I should just wrap up this sermon right here. And uh, guys, y y y you know, I, I, I'm, I, I know I get a bad rap uh, that I'm not the good little lefty social justice warrior I'm supposed to be. I am all for this gender equality and all of this other crap. Uh, I'm 100% in favor of all that. But uh, we got things to think about. There's too many people on this planet. Uh, and, and all of your little social justice warrior issues mean nothing in, in the face of the tsunami uh, that's heading our way. But anyway, I'm getting off on my own sermon, so let's get back to Mark. All right. Why is population growth and the associated issues such an important issue today? The magnitude of population growth has been colossal. It took the world hundreds of thousands of years, and modern humans about 10,000 years to reach a global population of 1 billion. That milestone was reached in 1800, and in the subsequent 220 years, the global population has grown to an estimated 7.8 billion. Linked to this growth has been massive changes in where people live. For most of human history, people largely lived in rural areas, such as bugs in a jar farm here outside of Ithaca. But in 2007, the global urban population outnumbered their rural counterparts for the first time. The shift was considerable. In 1950, there were about three quarters of one billion people. That's about, in 1950 on this planet, there were about 750 million people living in urban areas. But by 2018, this number had swelled to 4.2 billion people living in cities. And uh, this um, fellow is from South Africa, so there's some South African connections. So in South Africa has followed this trend with more than two-thirds of South Africans now living in urban areas. Okay, where is the corona panic connection? And Mark, he has to stretch a little bit to get the corona panic into this larger conversation. We are currently in the middle of the corona panic. And in South Africa, we are in month four of a series of strict lockdowns. Hundreds of thousands of people have lost their jobs due to the, not due to the virus, due to the economic shutdowns from the virus. Okay. Hundreds of thousands of people have lost their jobs. Children have been out of school for months and entire industries lie dormant. In this context, one might legitimately ask how important is World Population Day? Of what relevance is that for our current situation? And then, I'm not sure this little jarring segue here, the first reason lies squarely in the climate concerns the world now faces. 
which in turn have their, their roots in population growth and increased human encroachment on animal habitats. As is now accepted, massive industrialization in the past 200 years has resulted in significant environmental degradation. Do you think so, Mark? The environmental catastrophe we face, he says we may face. Yeah, right, Mark. The environmental catastrophe we now face is a direct consequence of human activity resulting in massive increases in greenhouse gases which have led to temperature increase, shrinking glaciers, and more frequent extreme weather events. The impacts of climate change are numerous, but a significant one has been the increasing displacement of people. And for those of you who do not know, I am a climate refugee. Uh, moving from Texas to upstate New York, have you seen the, uh, it's about 72 degrees here this morning, have you seen the f weather forecast for Texas for the next couple of weeks. Good Lord, did I get out of that place in time. So I know what he means. I am, I have been displaced by climate change. Climate migrants, such as me, are only one of the examples of how population movement is putting further pressure on already vulnerable cities forcing an ever-increasing expansion into previously remote animal habitats and wild areas. Rapidly expanding cities are devastating wildlife to the point where we are losing our biodiversity at a rate 1,000 times that in pre-human times. Uh, the total mass of wild animals has been reduced by more than 80%, while plant mass has been reduced by 50%. One consequence of this is that the wildlife that remains, you know, the 20% that remains, has had to adapt to living in a new proximity to humans and these new intimate conflicts configurations and the increased contact between humans and wild animals has massively increased outbreaks of infectious zoonotic diseases which are those caused by pathogens such as viruses, bacteria, and fungi that are transmitted to humans by animals. The corona panic is only one of the most recent examples of this. So back to climate breakdown. One of the conundrums of climate change, uh, I'm sorry, one of the conundrums of climate breakdown is that what is happening now is not immediately visible and appreciating what is happening requires a long-term view that may be difficult for many, and I'm losing my battery. Damn it. Act now to mitigate consequences in 20 years. Take a hit economically now so that your grandchildren will be in a better economic position than they might otherwise be. Uh, I need to jump ahead, guys, because I'm about ready to collapse on my battery. Uh, so I'm going to jump ahead to the end here. The current pandemic has shown a terrifying spotlight on human vulnerability and has shown up our human arrogance and our delusional sense of superiority and dominance of the natural world. The world has been shut down by a minute virus and we are at a loss about the way forward. Yes, our current predicament offers an opportunity to build back better. Yes, 
and I'm sure of that, Mark, and to acknowledge our interdependence with one another as well as the natural world, and wrapping up with my personal favorite sentence, if we fail to heed this lesson, future pandemics and climate breakdown will make our current COVID-19 pandemic seem like a bit of a walk in the park. That is exactly uh, the total uh, ruination of this planet uh, over this little virus uh, will seem like a walk in the park. Uh, what's coming down the pike. This is, and I continue to say, this is a bad hair day on the planet compared to what we're getting ready to see. And we're already hearing about some new kind of pneumonia. We're hearing about bubonic plague. We're hearing about brain-eating amoebas. You need to get out there, find your little piece of paradise, and get out there and enjoy it while you still can. So if you enjoyed what Professor Mark Tomlinson had to say about this walk in the park, otherwise known as the Corona Panic, spend a minute to upvote this video if you did not like uh, what he had to say I'm it now, but while you're over here, please subscribe to Collapse Chronicles and get out there and enjoy it while you still can. Bye, guys.